Okay, so I've been playing in Unity for the last couple of days um, just to see what it can do. I just converted a bunch of stuff over that I was working on in, uh, in Unreal. One of the main reasons I keep going to Unity is I'm, I like how they light stuff, like how the lighting works. Like right now I'm not using any uh, baked lighting. Oh, it is. Look at that. That's funny. Is it too hot? It's too hot for the webcam, guys. I don't know what that is. We're going to go to that. Bam. Oh, I got to see this now. Hang on. Nice. That's not that funny. <laughs> I look content. <laughs> like, hmm, that's nice. It's very good. I wonder what happened to the webcam. Now I'm now I'm worried. You guys are gonna have to buy me another webcam. <laughs> I kid. All right, so. 2017 to 2017, aw, that's so funny. So, okay, so I was looking at um, uh, the Amplify, like if you go to the, what is it, store, asset store, I think it's called Amplify. They have a number of things, but, uh, oh, there's even a sale on there. They have an ambient occlusion solution that they've they've made. So they have a shader editor, and it's node-based. But they're super active on adding stuff to it. I'm, like, really surprised. Like, in their forms and stuff, they keep updating it. So I was like, all right, I'll give it another try. There's some issues with it, of course, but um, it's, getting, it's getting awesome. Anywho, so what I've done is... Go into materials, where are we at here? I think it's shaders actually. So I've created a, I'm working on a foliage shader now, but you build a shader and then when you apply the shader to things, then you can input the maps you want. So you can just open in shader editor. So this is the shader that I'm using for, for all of the stone stuff. So what we've got um, so far, let's see how is the best to explain this. So I've got my stone material. I want I want them to make material functions or like nested materials. So like all of these can be like in one thing with one output that I can blend easily between another one. So I got this one. This is the stone material. If I double click this, oops, let's do this. Whoa. Hey, Larry, thanks for the follow, man. So I'll just start opening these up. So this is just my albedo for the stone. Um, and then I've got a normal and a roughness to it. And I've got it tiling four times. And it's on UV set three. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Uh, then we have our master normal, which is the normal map that if I zero to one bake, the asset, which I tend to at one point or another, then I'll, I'll map that to UV set zero, which I think by default it's, it's zero. Yeah. Like, I don't even think I need master mask. This says UV set one, so I don't even actually need that. Cause when you click these, you can tell it what UV set. Anyway, so master normal and master mask. Now the mask, let me see if I can find a good example of one. What I'm what I'm putting in the mask. Yeah, this is a good one. So what I'm putting in the mask is uh, so on the red channel. This is like an edgeware mask. So I'm using this mask to paint uh, lighter values on top of the.
pileable stone. This one is where the moss sits. This one is where kind of mud builds up and I'm using that to mask out like uh, areas where it gets a little bit more uh, reflective or the roughness shifts. And then the alpha channel I'm putting the AO. Um, so all those are packed inside of this master mask. And you can see that kind of goes out to everything because I'm using it to blend a bunch of stuff. Uh, the other material is this moss. So it's this guy. It's really weird looking, but I like it. Uh, I've made that in, in zebra. It actually doesn't even tile. That's the funny part. It's just so small, you don't ever notice it, so I just leave it alone. Uh, yeah, and then we've got the master uh, trim normal thing that we're working on. So we'll add more to this. And then we'll just, it'll give us a bunch of options for mapping to other objects as we, as we keep going. So we've got our unique normal and mask. We've got our stone and our moss. So the stone and moss are on UV set three. The trim is on UV set two. And the unique maps like these guys here are on UV set one. So UV set one, zero to one UVs. UV set two is where I'm mapping UVs to trim details that I blend into the normal map up here. And then UV set three is uh, for these guys. And the reason these are set to three is I take the UVs on UV set three of every asset and I do a uh, texel density auto size. So all UVs in UV set three are all the same size relative to the size of the object. So all the materials, no matter how how big or small the asset is has the same resolution of uh, tileable materials. Like these are the same. That will get really handy later. Um, but yeah, so with that, so up here we've got all the blending that's happening. Uh, and I'm just lurping and using the master mask to blend each of the materials together. I believe I mask the uh, the moss in last, and then also I'm adding a fresnel onto the outside edge of the moss. So like as you uh, as you get a low angle on it, it gets lighter. I'm trying. Let's see if I can find a good a good spot to uh, demonstrate that. Maybe right here. So like from up here, you see how the the green. When you go down low, it becomes lighter. Uh, the other thing I've done is the same thing with um, the ambient occlusion in general. So I've got the moss ambient occlusion, which actually looks like this. Uh, so UV set two is like ID map that you then tile on top of. I'm not sure what you mean. Saiza, how you doing? Um, I'm doing a Fresnel on all of the AO. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. I actually might not be, which is not what I want. I actually need the Fresnel to go all the way Hmm. So I need the Fresnel to go all the way around. So essentially what that does is uh, when you get a glancing angle on uh, something in shadow. So if this is in shadow, you get AO in here. But when, uh, when you get at a harsh angle, essentially the AO fades out, which kind of fakes like your you're not seeing the deep crevices because you're at the side, right? So like, here's a good example of the moss working. And then let's see if I can. I'm going to turn the uh, ambient occlusion off. Might be a little strong, actually. Anywho, so, so if you look from this angle, you can see the color of the moss is different from the moss here because it's a glancing angle. 
And then also um, in here, you can see the AO in between all of, like here, they're, they're pretty together. But up here, they, they start to, there's a little ambient occlusion inside of it. But when you get a glancing angle over here, the ambient occlusion goes away. And it gets lighter as well. So, and then this is the some of the examples of the detail normal. Like the, all this stuff is just UV map detail normals. Mmm, delicious. Anywho, I'm in the middle of converting all this stuff. I haven't really switched, but I'm really liking how the baking happens. Because you can just have it like, uh, where are we at here? I've got the lighting tab up right here. I can just set it to real time GI, and then I can toggle auto ge auto generate, and then whenever I move stuff around, it's just baking in the background. Only the things that have updated, so I'm never really having to sit down and do a full bake. I think later when I want really nice uh, baking, I can actually go and instead of doing, uh, where are we at here? Instead of just doing real-time GI, I can actually do a combination of both. So I can do real-time GI on top of things that are baked out. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, that's kind of what I've been up to. Yeah, that's all blending here. And the end result is I'm able to go into an asset and, for example, Go here. All I do is apply the two material blend and then I get all the inputs and I just input all of the, the textures I need, which for the most part, all I need to do is put the master normal in, which is the normal that was baked for this piece, and then the master mask and everything else gets solved. So I'm only inputting two maps. The rest are, have been created already. And then I'm like, oh man, these are really jagged. But if you look um, up here, I think this is the, uh, where are we at here? It's the camera. So in the camera, the camera, I have a uh, temporal AA turned on. And then I can probably turn the uh, post-processing on too. It's nice you get a little histogram too. Mm. Anywho, that's kind of what I'm up to. Um, if you guys are curious about more of that stuff, message me in Discord about what you would like to know specifically, and I'll see if I can get some answers. But yeah, it's overall, it's been pretty fun. Anyways, all right. I'm going to get out of here. Suha, what's up? Thanks for the follow. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. I'll be streaming at 7 o'clock my time. Right now it is 3.30 p.m. Uh, you can get a reminder in Discord. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging out. I think I streamed for five hours total today. Something like that. Or close to five hours. Anyways, cool. Thanks for chilling. Uh, I'll get all this stuff up on YouTube and yeah. Cheers guys. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.